It's no secret, groceries are more expensive than ever these days. So, have you thought about growing your own food to save money? Here to break down exactly how to do it and how much it'll cost you is Frank Ferragini, because of course, this guy knows what's up. Frankie, okay, talk to me about the money, honey. How much yeah. will it cost to start a garden? Yeah, and this conversation came up because Andy, our digital producer on City Line, has a new space and she has a little area that she wants to grow her own food. And she was telling me about the cost of how much food was costing her. And she's like, Frank, I want to grow my own food. I'm going to help her this year. She already has an established garden, but I really want to break it out for people maybe that are thinking about growing for the first time. I'm going to use some of the things that I grow in as examples. So let's say that we have a sunny space. That's what you need first and foremost. And maybe we want to do a raised bed. I generally love growing in these. These are troughs. These are what are called the stock troughs that you can buy at a farm supply store. They can range anywhere from $200 if you buy them used on Kijiji off a farmer all the way up to $400. Uh, you can see they have a drainage plug on the side. You would have to drill additional drainage. Next thing is you're going to need to fill them up. I'll tell you about soil in a second. If you want to grow food, really simple, really cheap, no money at all, Trace, no money at all. You see this big black pot here? This is what I grow my tomatoes in. Right now there's some cilantro that's there. That's just a pot that a tree was planted in and that's just a used grower pot that sometimes if you're nice to the garden center, they're going to actually give it to you. No cost whatsoever. So you can grow in that. As well, when it comes to soil, it depends on the soil you're selecting. But sometimes when you're filling a big container like this and you want to use an organic soil, that bag of soil can cost anywhere from $10 to $15. And in that container itself, it could fill almost $100 to $150 worth of soil. So already we're four. We're at $150. There's $550. We haven't even got to the plant. So year one, you don't really save a ton of money when it comes to growing your own vegetables. Okay, but you've got to get all of that stuff in for the setup. Is there anything else you need for the setup? Well, setup, sometimes you can get involved where you're going to need some different things for staking. So later on, we're going to be all of a sudden needing to stake some of the tomatoes that are if they're vine growing. So those trellises can be an additional cost. This one here has been one that I've used several years. So this cost me about $30 at the time, but this one's almost $10. This is almost 10 years old. So it's only costing me $3 per year that I've already got the growth out of it. There's fertilizer that you'll need too that adds to the cost. Um, but over time, what you'll find, year after year, you start saving money. But the main thing is, is, science has proven this, Tracy, there's something called the harvest high. So when you go out there and you harvest food for the first time in that season and you've harvested yourself, you actually get a dopamine rush. There's actually a high because we are hunters and gatherers. And not only that, it's not only the cost savings that we'll get over time, over years, but also we're going to eat better and eat more healthy. Yeah, we're getting back to actually what we're supposed to be doing as humans, right? So I think that probably feels very good to grow something. You know exactly what was in your soil. You know nothing was sprayed on it that can make you sick. It's an amazing thing. And I have to say, looking at your container gardens, Frankie, it looks more manageable. Like it looks like something I could do. I know my husband's into it, but I need to you get into could. it as well. I could do it. Okay, what are the best vegetables and fruits to start with so that we feel good about what we planted and it all works out? Yeah, that's the key, success. That's what I always want to do is give people garden success because then they'll really start to do very well over time. So probably one of the easiest things that you can ever grow, and this is a great way to start with kids as well as cherry tomatoes. So if you have a pot, you have a sunny space, you have a terrace, you grow a cherry tomato, super easy, needs six hours of direct light. One of the most underrated vegetables in the world out there, I think, is Swiss chard. Swiss chard is such a healthy green for you, but the benefit of Swiss chard Easy to grow, will even take cooler temperatures. Once I harvest it, it grows back. Kale. Kale has lost a little bit of its, uh, you know, it's it used to be all about kale, but kale is super simple to grow. You pull off the side shoots, very dense for you, very nutrient rich. Uh, zucchini, you're going to get a lot of zucchini over time. Those are super simple as well. And probably the quickest to germinate are some of the mescaline mixes, which is some of the lettuce greens. And as well, another easy one is right over here. If you want something quick to grow, nothing like a radish. And kids, kids, even though some kids don't like the taste of radishes, when you pull something out of the ground and they see this bright red vegetable come out of the ground, kids' eyes just go boom, and you got them eating vegetables for the rest of their life. Buy that. Or at least for that day. But it, honestly, they love <laughs> yeah, it. <it's> true. <laughs> they do love it. True. So, okay, that is beautiful because, like, there's a whole salad there. You got sides, you got broccoli, you got zucchini, you got all the things. What do we avoid? There's some things in a small space garden well, that you don't want to grow. Okay, so raccoons. Raccoons, they love corn. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> so corn is fairly inexpensive to purchase during the summer season, especially across the can country in Canada overall, most areas. Some of the northern areas are a little bit more expensive. This one here as well will grow so high that it will start to restrict light, so I wouldn't grow corn. If you're growing tomatoes, I would avoid growing potatoes. They're both from the deadly nightshade family. So if we get a disease on our tomatoes, it'll actually go over to the potatoes. But generally, potatoes can attract more disease that then can even attract the insects that would go over to our potatoes. Mm -hmm. And finally, I don't know if I have a CPAC here, but pumpkins. <laughs> pumpkins, some people are like, I want pumpkins. And you have like a small backyard. That pumpkin would actually take your entire backyard, the plant. <laughs> so even though you think it's a good idea, pumpkins are really inexpensive in the fall. If you have small spaces, avoid growing things like pumpkins. I was waiting to see if you were going to mention pumpkins because we used to have a family farm and we grew pumpkins and the pumpkins, you couldn't pick them up. They were way too big. Yeah. So Frankie, thank you for that. We're all going to get out there and start gardening Thanks, for our food. <laughs> Thanks, pumpkin. Thanks, pumpkin pie.